what's up world so today this session will be called dumb question asked by some investors now before I get I get started I want to do a disclaimer not all investor ask dumb question but a lot of them do now not in particular order but they're all my favorite and by the way they all happen to me so I uh, don't think I'm making this stuff up first one so uh, are you not gonna be worried about a uh, competition when they come guys give me a company that doesn't have any competition and I'll give you a dream because that's 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 the dumbest question I mean they there is no comp there's no company with no competition and it's not because somebody uh, uh, has the money to do the product to copy your product that uh, they can uh, beat you to your own game it's not gonna happen you know Business is more than just product. It's the people, the leadership that run in the company. So, uh, example number two. This happened last year, actually. It was uh, an investor that saw us, was interested in investing in our technology and business. So, we started negotiating, talking about valuation and, uh, and uh, different things and where we are, what we need. Then he made the offer. And then I, I was like, no, nah, that's too high. We already had done so much. We had customer. We already had spent a lot of money on the technology. Felix's valuation was way too low. Plus, we already had investor. Um, and then he said, uh, first of all, valuation don't mean nothing. So threw me off a little bit. But then he said something very interesting. He told me I had a question. It was like, uh, it was not really a question. Question, but it was formula as a question. Say, you know I can take over your company, right? And then I looked at I looked at him, and uh, and then say, well, I can just hire you a bunch of guys, and uh, there's nothing special about your, your 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 kiosk. I can duplicate that and and build a team and and take over the market. And then uh, so I kept my cool, and I was like, okay, well, you know, it is possible. Um, uh, but I, I kept negotiating. I was like, well, you know, how about we start small and all those things? And he was an old school guy, you know. Uh, he did his business old school, like he take a chunk or nothing. You know, and then he was like, well, um, are you willing to give up control of your company uh, and give us, you know, when we invest a majority share? And I said, no. The moral of this particular story is don't get intimidated. You know, don't get intimidated by um, by investor. You know, they're gonna they're gonna throw you off. They're gonna make you believe uh, that without them, you know, and not all of them, but but some investor will make you believe that without them, you can't make it. You know, this is I call it the scare tactics. And sometimes when you're in a bad space where you really need the money, it's very difficult to make a rational decision because now you you walking around with you know you live it in in despair. Uh, but one thing you need to understand, and I want to make it clear, yes, somebody can copy your, your, your products. Somebody can uh, um, burn through cash and, and compete with you, but they can't create or they can't pay for uh, uh, passion. You know, they can't buy passion. They can't buy motivations. The only thing they can buy is, is, is employees. You know, and, and if you have your idea, your product, you're passionate, you're driven, you know, you you the one who have the vision. Nobody can buy that, you know, and they can't buy that. I don't care how much money they have, and you need to understand that. You need to, to believe in yourself and understand that. But, of course, you don't convey uh, and, you you know, keep your cool, but at the same time, that's not who you want to do business with. And, and that's the particular uh, aspect I want to talk about, about that particular uh, uh, investor what's up world welcome today's Sunday actually man doing my Sunday walk with a little man here anyway you see the cow titty it's literally uh, about 10 minutes away from the house Huge, beautiful scenery, untapped, undeveloped. Uh, anyway, today uh, 
going to continue a topic for the what we call the dumb questions and uh my favorite one i'll definitely say it's my favorite one just because uh i've heard it uh quite a few times from different investors and it's a question that never made sense it still doesn't make sense to me but it's a question that i get all the time and uh before i get to the question let me give you a little bit of context about what a red does for those who don't know so basically we developed a smart solar kiosk technology uh to revolutionize the way distribution of uh digital services and connectivity is done for low-income people so uh our kiosks uh you can charge phone you can pretty much uh buy digital services and also connect offline online Woo. catching my breath here <clears throat> so uh, so yeah we we the first and only one-stop shop platform uh in the market that able to do all those things so the number one question i get <laughs> the most popular one actually actually is uh well facebook and google will provide connectivity all over africa anyway how you gonna compete with that oh my god <sighs> to this day man i i i don't understand how people come up with those questions there is no company that dominate well i shouldn't say dominate but there's no company that own 100 percent of the market even social media look at facebook okay two billion plus people right well there's a lot of other social media uh uh platform out there you know they're not the only one ah. and uh there you go tt kind of sunny out here All right. So connectivity is such a broad spectrum also. You know, you might bring connectivity. What about last mile connectivity? What about offline? Because when you deal with low income people, online is not always the only solution. We discovered that offline, there's a market for offline content uh, where people can access content via Wi-Fi. They don't need data on their phone. And again, it's not to replace internet, but uh, that's a crazy question. And I've got that question mostly from international investors um, that really don't understand the market, don't understand the African market, the African context. Um, also, the they don't understand the... the the way the dynamics work you know how you bring uh, connectivity of proximity which is uh, really important for certain communities again no company will serve hundred percent of the market in any service or technology it does not exist and if you're an investors out there please educate yourself about Africa before you make a, a decision on a company that you might regret you know uh and I, I love when they say well you know facebook with the, the the new system they have where they're developing by the way facebook was banned uh to bring connectivity in india number one uh google balloon system uh well google uh, they're offering wi-fi system for free in nigeria they just launched but uh um they're making money off advertisement we'll see how that model will work we work with telecom companies you know it's another thing thinking that a company a foreign company will come and and dominate the internet market and replace telecos and all is ludicrous borderline dumb um and i don't make these videos to make fun of uh some investors and all but i want you guys to be aware of what's happening on the ground right especially you young entrepreneur get influence and you know you get uh you know we we, we get a lot a lot of startups get scared when they run uh investors you know they think they know everything 
and they take their words for their bond, you know? So they, they say, well, maybe he's right. Nah, they're not right. If you don't know your market, you shouldn't be an entrepreneur. So that, that's my favorite uh, dumb question, man. We got one more, guys, before we move forward. Let me finish this walking. I'll highlight you guys in a few. What's up? Say hi. <laughs> That's too hot for you. So for the last segment of the questions uh, that I've been getting for investors, this one is very interesting because uh, it's about uh, why do uh, why do people need uh, solar energy? Don't don't they have uh, electricity at home? Now that particular question, uh, of course, we talking about someone or some people that have never been in Africa don't understand the rural uh, spectrum or the refugee camps or all those different challenges with energy. And uh, the reality is, unfortunately, as African entrepreneur you're gonna to have to pitch ideas to foreign investors until the ecosystem in Africa gets built in. And that will take some time. Things are changing, but there's still not enough investors locally, and not just VC. Uh, but the point is, you just gotta roll with the punches, guys. You know, you can't take these things personally. Ignorance is bliss. People just don't understand the whole ecosystem. And most of them probably never been to Africa. I remember a lot of time I ask, have you ever been to Africa? They tell you no, they've been, but countries like South Africa, you know, big cities, never in rural areas and all those things. So you gotta roll with the punches. Again, the point of this video is not necessarily to point, you know, what dumb, what's not dumb. The point is for you guys, for you guys startups uh, that are pitching out there, looking for funding and all those things, Make sure you pitch to guys uh, or, or, or individuals or investment firms that understand the ecosystem. Another thing I would say when you deal with investment, and that has worked really well with us, instead of looking for investors, uh, most of them will not even touch you in a, in a 10 foot pole, meaning if they don't know you, they're not gonna do business with you. I don't care how big or how great your business is or what you believe is, they're just not gonna do business with you. So what you need to do is connect with what we call fund manager or capacity building guys that already have relationship with those investors. They already know who to talk to. They already have that, um, that relationship. They already have uh, uh, done business with them. Those are the fund manager capacity building that if you pitch to them, they're looking for project. So the way it works is they look for project. You have to picture this as a consultant firm, for example. Uh, there, there's organization out there. Their job is to look for project that are interesting enough and to present it to investors in their network. Uh, it's much easier, it's a much faster flow because now what you do is instead of trying to get in the door of investors, now you work with a partner that will do the job for you. Of course, you still have to do the pitching and all those things. And that industry is growing tremendously. And um, I definitely want to uh, put that in there somewhere on the link you'll see at the bottom or somewhere at the top. Check Green Tech Capital. They've been one of our best partners when it comes to fundraising. And their model is extremely innovative. And that structure is growing tremendously in Africa. So I hope that video will give you some insight on how to raise capital and some of the dumb questions I've, I've had for the last five, six years. And please subscribe to the, to the channel. Uh, and if you have some topics you're interested in, some topics you want me to add, please put that on the comments uh, below or send me an email or whatever channels you think it's best. Take care.